but she had come to take pride in the attraction her ass had for him and enjoyed letting him look as he pleased. The jeans she liked so much, low cut and stretchy, pulled way down when she bent over and showed him the very tops of her buttocks. He said that he thought she was not wearing panties of all things. And her squirm, too. Evelyn asked him one day while on the deck of a cabin by a river, her legs resting high on the railing, wide enough apart that he might rest his hand comfortably upon her cunt. What about the stuff in your stories? He raised his eyebrows and looked into her eyes. The question had been a long time coming, and it called for Evelyn to draw upon a set of reserves just for the asking that she was only recently aware that she possessed. Which stuff, Derek? The day was hot, had been, since the sun rose fully. And they had cooled off sitting close together in the river, the water shallow and swift rushing about them, tugging at their legs as they struggled out to where the water would flow shoulder deep. She wore what she had described as her old lady bathing suit, and it certainly was, a light turquoise sheath and skirt. If he remembered the, the descriptions right, 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 pardon me. If he dis, remembered the descriptions rightly, it was the Lands End or LL Bean catalogs that carried such suits. Unfucking necessary. <laughs> but she was shy, or at least uncertain. Um, deep breath. The really naughty stuff. Being with the woman wants you to use her as you please. Women who are in hungry touch with their inner slut. He smiled at her gently, resting his hand as he did, fingers gently exploring the bones of her pelvis, bringing the sweet butt of her clitoris to stand out against the tight fabric of her crotch. Full coverage, they described it. He could feel a weapon slicker than river water, and she, she relaxed her thighs, letting her knees part just a little further. She closed her eyes and heard the songs of the birds in the bushes all around them, and the sound of the river dancing. Yes, she said, a whisper to the breeze. Those. Have you ever known a woman like that? I have, he replied. Would you tell me about it when you touch me? She considered telling him that she had forgotten her suit on the next hot and torpid feeling morning, but upon reflection, she felt no need to make such an excuse. Evelyn caught his eye and winked, then indicated the river with a little jerk of her chin. She rose from her chair and peeled off the baggy t-shirt she was wearing with one swift yet tentatively dramatic flourish, then reached behind her to undo the insubstantial peach-colored thing that barely obscured her breasts. Evelyn did not, Evelyn did not need much support and was frankly glad of that. She stood before him, smiling, in just the little cutoffs that hung low from her hips. Evelyn had an elfin air about her at times, and she swung her shoulder-length blonde hair in a slow flash a golden veiling that allowed her eyes to dance for but a moment before hiding them as her shorts dropped away. Modest were her panties, but small and nearly sheer nonetheless. There, she said. Is that better? 
she knew it was, just from the appreciation apparent on his face. And, <coughs> and the arousal was evident. The tacky short <coughs> all he wore took on a very noticeable bulge. Yes, indeed, he replied. And he too stood and let his pants fall, trying to appear as casual as possible with his big cock hanging out there. It's you who doesn't wear the underpants, she nearly <laughs> shouted. <laughs> but my God, thought Evelyn, look at it. I can't touch it. But he stepped to her and put his arms around her waist, <coughs> kissing her as he felt her bottom through the thin fabric of her panties, and she took hold of him, gripping him tightly, reminding herself what a cock felt like in hand. So stiff for her. He made her come, standing in a little, standing with her little panties on, touching her and kissing her. He took her small nipples firmly between thumb and finger, twisting them alternately, and this brought forth a low moan from her, and made her push her open cut harder upon the heel of his big hand. The wetness of her had dampened and darkened the crotch of the panties, and he held her upright as she shuddered against him. When her knees were trustworthy again, he steered her to the old pine bench and sat her down, back to the railing. He pulled his chair close so that she had to rest her feet on the arms, and he put his feet to either side of her own bench. Evelyn leaned forward between his knees and took hold of him again, riding her small hand up and down his shaft. It felt instinctive to her. When he exploded, she held him tightly, taken by surprise. The first coursing jets of the first coursing <coughs> jets of him, hot and powerful, spattered, spattered them both, and the bellow he let loose rang across the river and back. Earlier. Sitting in the river with a back to him, Evelyn closed her eyes and simply felt the water rushing against her, swirling about her body. From the neck down, the marvelous tingling in her body cunt, like leftover electricity still running through the surface. Cool and so nice for the sun. His back held her, facing the current, facing upstream. I'm glad you take things so slowly, she said. Evelyn watched a hawk swoop down after a smaller bird and was relieved to see it, es see it escape the hawk's talons and flee. It's really you, Evelyn. Your curiosity is our guide. She thought about that. I am very curious, she said. You know that. And I've been thinking way too much about what you told me. Do you think you're ready to try more? He asked her. I don't think I am. Not just yet, she said, licking her arms with his. But I think I might like to watch. Mm -hmm.